Hi, my name is Clint. I am uh, an enterprise account executive here at Kite Nexus, which really just means that I work on the sales side of our house. Today, we're going to walk through a high level technical demonstration on, on Kite Nexus. At the end of this presentation, I'll have a contact slide in case you'd like to reach out for any additional information. But without any ado whatsoever, let's go ahead and get started. We are a technology company at our core. Our mission is to spread continuous improvement. And there are two beliefs that drive that mission. The first is that having a culture of improvement is the single best strategy an organization can take for long-term success, full stop. The second is that technology plays some role in spreading or creating that type of culture. The way that we help organizations is through the design and development of a software system that allows people to really do two things. Take all of the collaboration they're doing around problem solving and all of the reporting that they want to be able to push out and organize that into a single succinct system. We also believe that creating that type of culture is a bit of a three-legged stool that requires people, process, and technology to be aligned towards that goal. People does not just mean those participating in improvement. It means your leadership group that is committed to the philosophy, communicates its importance, holds itself and others accountable to it, and then deploys resources to support it. When we talk about processes, ultimately, it's your methods by which improvement actually happens. Every organization is a little bit different, but they, they should all be consistent, simple, have discipline built around them, and also be organized. The technology piece can be a little tricky because historically, technology used for CI is pen and paper, sticky notes, whiteboards, spreadsheets, shared drives, all cobbled together in a bit of a Franken system. But, but ultimately, what we find is that that leads to some challenges or some problems, right? It leads to low visibility into what work is actually going on. It leads to improvement work that isn't aligned to, to corporate goals or corporate strategy. It's difficult to drive problem-solving standards into the organization. And so you, you don't get a lot of continuity in how you actually do things. Massive gaps in reporting the impact and the ROI of improvement and then ultimately, it, it leads to a, a, a more difficult degree of sharing information out. If I solve a problem here, how do I make, make sure that I'm not solving it in parallel somewhere else? Um, I, I have been doing this for about five years now. I am blown away by how little focus is put into the technology piece of this puzzle. Um, we are seeing it drive huge results for our customers as of February of 2022 collectively $5 billion in cost savings driven out of our customers in Kinexus. They're committed to the culture. They believe in problem solving and ultimately their businesses are benefiting as a result of it. So uh, what, what are some things that you should look for in a piece of software or, or in this case, a software partner? There's four primary things here. Number one, that piece of technology has to be purpose-built for CI. Number two, the person or the people supporting it need to be dedicated to the belief in the mission of continuous improvement. Number three, that system has to be configurable and flexible so that it can match itself to processes and approvals and methodologies of the specific end user. And then a little bias here, but we believe that an account-based management approach is the way to go. CI professionals or professionals are problem at solving problems. You shouldn't be administering a technology solution that should be administered by somebody else. It's a big part of our job with all of our customers. That's all for my soapbox right now. I would say, let's go ahead and jump in. Let me walk you through the system. We'll try to have a little bit of fun as we go. What you're looking at right now is Kinexus. This is a demo environment. There's a lot of dummy data logged in. I'm actually logged in as a user by the name of Francis. I lovingly call him Frontline Francis. That's what this interface is designed to show. It's simple, it's easy, and I want some very specific things from Francis every single day. 
Number one, I want ideas. I want ideas about how to make our business better from everybody in my organization. In the Kinexus system, that intake starts right here at this green create button. Anytime somebody has one, they click it. I open up this intake screen. I'm asking to put the bare bones information here. Give me as little as possible. Get your idea in. We'll get it routed to the right people. We can get more information later. Francis thinks that we should move the trash can because he believes that it's dangerous and that he always trips over it. Great. A couple quick things here. Hey, it looks like there might be some other ideas that exist in the system similar to yours. I can do a quick, quick click, look and see those ideas, or I can come right here, create that idea. The system will identify who Francis is, where does he sit, and then this kicks off a workflow. All of these people get a notification about the idea. That idea shows up on one of a number of different dashboards with this small blue indicator, which just tells me that it's a new idea. We haven't really said yes or no to it yet, and we haven't decided whether or not it's something that we're going to work on. What you're seeing on the screen here is an example of what we call a dashboard. It's virtual visual management, and ultimately the goal of the dashboard is to give people visibility into their work. For Francis and for people that are closer to the front line, hey, here are the ideas you've submitted or the idea teams that you're on. Here's a task that you got come and do. Really easy interface, really simple. Not a lot else there. I'm going to hop out of Francis. I'm going to log in here as, as a user named Greg. Greg is a bit of a power user in my system. He can really do kind of whatever he wants to. We'll make sure that role permissions are tailored in the right way. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, Greg kind of has unlimited access here. What's also unique about Greg is that he actually is the direct manager of Francis. And every time Francis has an idea, Greg gets a notification about it. Shows up right here in the notifications bell. Nothing earth shattering here. This is a notifications window, but hey, there's a new idea from somebody on my team that I need to address. I need to say thank you. And then we need to make a decision about whether or not this is something that, that we can actually, actually work on. What I've also done here for Greg is I've really I've built a simple, I call it a, a huddle board, but really it's an idea Kanban board where I've said, I want all the new ideas for my team to show up here on the left. I want any active improvement or problem solving that we're working on to show up here in the middle. And I want anything we've completed on this particular team over here on the right. Well, there's a new idea from Francis and it's something we need to address. Where and how exactly this happens is going to vary customer to customer. For our example, let's say we're at our morning huddle. Have this idea come in, we're standing around a television screen and somebody says, hey, Francis, tell me what's going on with the trash can. Well, hey, it's always in the way. I always trip over it. It's a safety hazard. It's really something that we should fix. Also, I think it might save me a little bit of time because I have to walk back and forth really far to throw trash away. Really cheeky example, I know. But let's say this is something we're actually going to work on. In our system, you go through a process we call an assignment. So come right here, click assign. And then I'm really doing two things. I'm putting a team together. I'm filling in some of the missing information. And then that team's actually going to go work on this. So, you know, let's make Erica responsible for it. She leads HS&E for this particular area. Let's see if it's not something we can get moved by Friday. It's just a trash can. It shouldn't be too terribly difficult. I'll make sure that I uh, put some collaborators or teammates on this. We don't work on safety issues alone. And then as I get down here into the bottom, I'm really just into a lot of different configuration options. I'm asking teams for a proposed solution. We talked earlier about aligning to strategic goals. I'd like to make sure that all of my improvement work is tagged to one of my corporate pillars. I'd also like to make sure that I categorize this information in the appropriate way. And let's call this a warehouse issue for now. I'll get some more information later, but I'm going to assign this work. The team will get notified that they're part of the team. It'll show up on their personal dashboard, and then they can use Kinexus like a collaboration space. They can assign tasks to one another for larger projects or undertakings. They can use comments to communicate back and forth and send alerts so that everything is, is in one place and you have a single source of truth for everything that's going on.
In addition to that, this is now an active improvement idea. So it's in my active column on this particular dashboard. Before we go any further, I, I do just kind of want to give an example and, and help people understand the breadth of configurability here. So this is another template in our system. This is one of my many versions of an A3 uh, in Kinexus, but I've got different details required here. I've got a larger team that's responsible for this one. As I move down the screen, I do have a due date upcoming. This one's due Friday here as well. I have tagged this to my mission and culture pillar. It's a, it's a morale improvement uh, problem or idea. I have an area on the right-hand side for file attachments and hyperlinks. The two files that are here just so happen to be pictures, so they're showing up in the middle. I'm using a series of milestones for uh, to govern a PDCA cycle here. We see customers use these in a lot of different ways as stage gates and toll gates within their projects. As I move down the screen, this is what comments look like here. I have an area for charts or KPIs. We'll get into this in a little bit more detail. I do have some tasks assigned out to the team here. It looks like we have a couple here that are overdue. Probably need to go talk to Bo, see what's going on there. And last but certainly not least, at the very bottom, we have this, this view we call timeline. Really what it is, is an audit trail. You know, who changed what on this project and when did they change it? In addition to the, to the configurability of a, of a template, you also have the ability to configure a number of different dashboards. Now I have quite a few here in my demo environment. I'm gonna to go to this one and, and talk through a couple of things. I call this my balance scorecard view. Uh, I, I borrowed this uh, from a customer uh, who tries to align all of their work underneath strategic corporate goals. And that's the way that I've built this particular dashboard out. I have four made up pillars. Each column underneath the pillar has KPIs, and metrics that we're measuring to, to determine whether or not we're successful or how we're tracking towards that success. And then also what I've done as well is I've just said, hey, every, every bit of problem solving or everything that we're working on underneath these pillars, I just wanna have it show up right here at the bottom. So I can see, hey, you know, I've got 12, 12 items or 12 projects that are improving quality that are ongoing right now. And I can click in and I can get more information from these. In addition to aligning problem solving activity underneath a strategic pillar, what we also try to give people to do, give people the ability to do is align KPIs and metrics underneath those two. So this is what we call a chart in Kinexus. This is a simple process behavior chart with an upper and lower control limit. There's nothing really earth shattering about this. You could do this in Excel. To me, there's a couple key differences in doing this in Kinexus versus a different system. Number one, I can annotate data points to provide context around them. I missed a throughput times goal today. Here's why I missed it. We had a plant outage. Or throughput times have been improving since this date because we put this countermeasure in place or we started a new process on this date. That's number one. Number two, I can trigger notifications off of these data points. Something goes in, I can notify the quality team. I can have those out of control metrics or below goal metrics show up on a dashboard once a month that a leadership team or a team of directors reviews and starts to put countermeasures in place for. Number three, you can take any sort of improvement work and you can align that improvement work directly underneath the metric. Anybody that comes to the chart can see why we missed, can see where, the, where we're headed, and then can come right here and say, wow, it looks like Abby Lane is responsible for an improvement item to help make throughput times better. I can click on that item. That will open up the template. The template has all the detailed information about the problem solving activity, the team that's around it, the due date. And then I can go get involved as I need to, or I know who to pick up the phone and go make a phone call to. I'm gonna jump back right here. Let's go move the trash can. So I've assigned this to, we got an idea, we assigned this team out to this idea. They've been working on it and hey, we moved it. We found the best place for it. We're ready to close this idea out. In our system, everything goes through a process we call a resolution. So come right here to resolve. 
type in a description of exactly what it is that we did. Nothing gets deleted in Kinexus. It results in change or it does not. By the way, if you have an idea that comes in that you can't work on for whatever reason, the answer here is no. You can then configure a set of what we call no change reasons to provide some feedback to the person who had the idea and close that loop. Hey, we don't have the resources right now. Or, hey, you know, somebody else identified this already and we're actually working on it. Assuming here that the answer is yes, that's when you, you ask yourself, great, what's, what's the benefit to the organization? Or maybe we're a safer organization because Francis doesn't trip over the trash can anymore. Maybe what we found was that actually there was some hard cost savings associated with this. So click cost savings. We'll come right here to add amount. And I don't know, let's do something simple. We're going to save $1,100 a month uh, because we now buy fewer trash bags. Sustainment is difficult to help. We can schedule review dates for all of our items. Let's push this one out 60 days. Let's make sure that the trash can is still in the appropriate place and that the place is appropriate for the trash can. And then the last step in our process here is really about sharing or broadcasting information. If I have another team, another person, another department that I think could benefit from this particular improvement, I can say, hey, you know what? The New York group would really be able to take advantage of this new trash can location. Or, hey, I was talking to Arnold last week and he was interested in, in hearing what came of it. And so I'll just I'll get an email out to him right now. Complete the idea, close it out. You'll get a couple things. You'll get a success message that the idea is actually done. That idea will move itself into this black or completed status. Here is my scheduled review date. So it'll pop back into people's inbox when it's time to go through it again. I've broadcasted notifications out to the other people I selected at the end as well. They have a link. That link will bring them to this screen. If it's something that can be replicated, man, great. Come right here. They can create a copy of the idea. They can assign their own team to it. And then they can go kind of run that project in their own area. Of course, this isn't an active item anymore. It's moved itself over to my done column. And uh, I can move on to the next improvement or the next project. I mentioned at the opening that Kinexus helps our customers accomplish two things, collaborating and then reporting results. What we tend to do is build a series or a set of reporting dashboards out for executive teams and for reporting results around, in, around improvement. The four on the screen here are just a small subset of the reports that we have here, but they tend to be the most commonly used and they tend to provide the best insight into improvement. All of our reporting falls into one of three buckets. We report on activity, we report on engagement, and then we report on impact of improvement work in our organization. This report here in the top left-hand corner called the improvement curve, it's just an idea or a quick glance into, hey, am I growing? Am I getting ideas in? Am I completing them at a reasonable clip? So left to right, this blue line is how many ideas are created in the system. This black line that follows it are how many have I completed? And then the green one underneath that is how many have I started or how many do I have active? An up and right tick on this chart signals, hey, I'm headed in a good direction. We're doing things the right way. Let's keep the train moving. To break that down a little further on, on the activity side, we call this the activity by person report. It just gives you a sense of like who's participating at the highest levels in the organization. Greg, Jeff, Blake, Harold, Becky, giving a lot of ideas. Those ideas are resulting in positive change for the organization. How do I recognize these folks? How do I, how do I give them a shout out? You know, how do I honor them in a way that says, hey, please keep this, keep this going? You know, conversely, um, Harry, Blanche, Heath, you know, how do we coach these guys to get more involved? Or have they been here for a week and maybe we should give them a little bit of a break? All of our customers are trying to find a way to measure the health 
of their improvement culture, that can be a little difficult and a little nebulous. We use two primary measures for that. The first is what's called the annualized improvements number. Simply put, it's the number of ideas submitted per person per year across the organization. An up and right tick tells me I'm getting more ideas, tells me my culture is growing. We marry that number with this used system percentage. Simply put, it's the percentage of your user population that is actively engaged in some form of improvement work in Kinexus. So an up and right tick on both of those charts signals I'm headed in the right direction. Getting more ideas and having a lower percentage of my user population tells me I am getting more, but they're only coming from a smaller place within my organization and it's something I need to go investigate. Last but certainly not least, everybody that we work with is trying to find the right way to show some results around improvement. We call this the impact summary report, but ultimately it's the aggregation of what the business impact of improvement work is. What's the hard cost savings? How have we avoided cost? Are there areas where we've generated revenue? Have we saved time for the organization? Down here at the bottom, you know, have we made changes that have led to employee or staff satisfaction that have made us a safer organization? And then typically once a month or once a quarter, hey, what were the things that we decided we weren't going to work on? And, and what categories do they fall into? Because maybe now what we've done is we've bought ourselves some more resources. And so this idea that we decided not to do because we didn't have the resource is something that, that we can revisit. And maybe it's something that we can put into the hopper. And then to me, one of the most dynamic things about, about KiteNexus is the ability to take all of this information and then slice and dice down by different area or different level or different location. So we build out what we call a network structure for all of our customers. And in my fictitious environment, I have a, a corporate group with some shared services departments. And then I've broken my, my stuff out into, into physical locations. So if I'm part of the Dallas group or I'm visiting Dallas, I can click. I'll filter down for what's going on in just that area. I can have a quick snapshot of exactly what's going on, who's participating, how are things doing in that particular area. And then I can make some decisions about exactly what it is that I want to do. If you're interested in learning more about Kite Nexus, please reach out to us. In the meantime, check out our continuous improvement blog and ongoing webinar series for some awesome resources. I think you all have heard enough from me today. I'd like to leave you with a few words from our customers. Keep improving and we will see you Kite next time. It's simple. It's easy. It's just easy. It's so easy and so intuitive. Overall, you know, people can get in there without having even any training and understand what they what they need to do. It's easy to show exactly what we're working on, the strategies that we're going down, and the improvements that we've made. It was so simple. So we incorporated that right in the standard work. The tracking is very easy. It's really helpful for us. I like the usability, the support, uh, the ease of use to bring it in. To roll this information up and make it presentable and easy to see and understand for our executive leaders as well. Not only how easy it is to navigate, but how easy it is to correct if you do something wrong. So we tell them, play with it, it will not explode. Okay, like I can go in there for like two hours and I can accomplish stuff that I would take like eight hours in a day to do. So it's just really easy for me. It just makes it easy. You got my attention, baby.